We are in Home Depot getting stuff to make a mock of our hard bimini. has done a really good job making a mock with PVC of our future hard bimini. Pain in the butt. So we didn't even end up using that structure. It was just a little too big and too complicated and too expensive to weld up. To make it a little cheaper, I would have had to do the legwork of bringing it from the welding shop to the boat, mock it up, make sure the tacks were good, bring it back, back and forth, and it was just a big thing for that, and it still would have been pretty expensive. So I think that big frame all entwined together would have been necessary if our top was gonna to be very heavy. So we decided to take a different route and just make our actual bimini top really light and we went along the lines of what one of our fellow youtubers did uh, sailing Zingaro he actually has the same boat he built his out of Nidacore which is a really light honeycomb material and he bent it and fiberglass did we did the same concept but just with foam and that way since our bimini is going to be so light we could use freestanding supports instead of a whole frame intertwined with the supports so that way I'd have a little more flexibility with the freestanding supports of how I was going to mount them and where I was going to mount them. And I wouldn't have to go back and forth to the welder with this huge frame. I could do it with single poles. So that's what we did. We have just traced the curve of the top of the cabin top onto cardboard. And now Billy is cutting it out. And then we're going to make a mold out of wood, I think. We are currently in my parents' backyard making our wooden mold featuring Miley Moo. So we previously showed you guys a mock-up of a PVC frame for the Bimini. But since then we have scratched that idea. It was going to take too much time and cost too much money. So we got a bunch of ideas from Sailing Zingaro, who has the same boat as us. And in another blog, we'll link below, because we got a lot of good ideas from them. Louder, I can't hear you. You're so smart. Right, we're mixing up some slow cure epoxy laminating resin. We got the frame all laid out. So I'm not sure where the video went in this, but we took a one inch PVC pipe and we kind of wrapped it around the edge of that piece of foam. So we used the radius of the bottom of a five gallon pail to draw out the curve on the corners. And then we used that same five gallon pail, we heated up the PVC slowly and bent it around the bottom of the five gallon pail to get that same radius. Kind of just laid it down around the foam on the frame. And we also had to bend the big curve in it and we just had to heat the whole thing up real slow and kind of bend it out. And then I used a little wooden dowel that fits snugly into the PVC to kind of splint them together where the joints were. And the reason we had the PVC frame is to get a nice radius around the edge of it. Also to have a little lip on top of it so we could have some rainwater collection. And also to have a little bit of a handhold around the edge of the bimini frame. I'm gonna laminate this 1708 glass onto there. You ready? All right, we're pretty much done wetting out all of the foam. About to roll on the glass. How you feel? 
like I'm ready to go to the Bahamas. All right, we just finished laminating and not super happy with how it came out. We have a million bubbles in it. You can see them everywhere, air bubbles, and we just can't get them out because the foam is only half inch and it keeps flexing because I only put kind of struts in for the mold instead of I should have I should have put like laid plywood over that mold and then lay the foam over the mold so the foam when it flex when we're trying to squeegee all the bubbles out the air bubbles so we're gonna have to go back when this cures and sand the whole thing and open up all those bubbles and fare it in it's gonna be a lot of fairing Oh man, could have gone better, but it's not terrible. It looks so yesterday we finished the outline, we laid the glass, and now Billy is cutting off the excess little fiberglass pieces. It's not fully cured yet, so it's still a little bit soft. So we're just killing time. probably be doing this with like a utility blade, but. I'm sure someone will let us know. All right, we have, we kind of built a frame to keep the bend in it because it was flexing a little bit when we took so it off that frame over there. And we fared in the crack. There's just a little bit, bit of a crack there around the edge. So we kind of fared that in and it's still wet. So we're gonna try to laminate it while it's still wet and that'll get a chemical bond to the glass here we go second lamination all right our bottom lamination on this hard top is all cured so we use this stuff called peel ply this stuff i've never used it before it feels like like when we first put it on it feels like a really tight woven fiberglass cloth kind of but more like like nylon like a little bit different supposedly you put it on after you do your fiberglass layup and you kind of just put this on and squeegee all the bubbles out and it wets out immediately. And it's supposed to make it so your lamination comes out super smooth and flat. So I'm just taking it off now. And I've never used it before. And it is like underneath where I'm peeling it off. So you just peel it right off the lamination. It's, it's kind of hard, hard to peel off a little. But, but then underneath it is totally flat pretty super smooth so i'm pretty happy with this stuff so we're gonna peel the rest off and see how it looks so much sanding so much sanding how's it looking pretty smooth Sierra, Sierra's pulling up the peel ply right now. It's kind of hard to get off, but once it comes off, like, look how smooth this is. Here, let me show them how smooth it is. So this is pretty much our final lamination coat. We just got to sand, probably fill in some spots, and, and start painting. The sanding never ends. Want to see something funny? You want to see something funny? Okay, sit down. <laughs> I got fiberglass tan lines. All right, mixing some paint. We got this thing all sanded down nice and smooth and Sierra brushed it down with some alcohol. So it's paint time. We're using all grip. Probably went a little too fancy on the paint, but whatever, it'll look good. Using some flattening agent for underneath on the underside here this side so that it's not as bright and shiny so like when you're sitting under it for shade or whatever it's not like super bright you don't get a glare it's not super bright you don't get sunburnt from the reflection from the water and then off the top of the thing so yeah flattening it out a little bit
second coat on the bottom of our hardtop. Sierra's doing a great job painting and she won't let me paint. I don't want him to steal the credit. Because <laughs> it's coming out so good. Um, not perfect, but good for us. It, not your fault, the prep job. Yeah, we just sanded the first coat down with like 220. I think this is all we're gonna have to do. And we still don't have to tip it out because it's laying, like I said before, it's laying pretty flat and it's on a horizontal surface, so it's coming out good, at least good enough for us. Like if this was the side of a boat hull and we're doing a perfect job, it'd probably be a little different, but I think it's gonna look great. Daddy. We're gonna tape off the edges because we're gonna put a little bit of non-skid on this top layer on the top side of the hard top, just in case we ever have to walk up there. It's not super slippery. Are you enjoying the shade already? This windlass has been, the platform has been falling apart the past few times. I've been using it hard to pull the chain up. It's probably just soft. It's a thin piece of wood with fiberglass, plywood, not even hardwood. So we're gonna replace that today. All right, we got some white oak. We epoxy two pieces together and screwed them up underneath the edges of the deck here into some struts that are down there. Next, we're gonna measure out some bolt holes with using the windlass as a pattern. We'll over drill them, then we'll fill them with epoxy, and then we will drill out the normal size bolts and mount that on there. We coated this whole thing with epoxy. I might paint over it or put some varnish on it or something. I don't know. Epoxy at least will give it some strength and it'll yellow in the sun if we don't varnish or paint it. But we're short on time. We gotta go sailing. So we could always do that later. In the meantime, I've replaced, look at the, the previous owner did. I guess when his uh, webbing started to fail, he some zip tie. So I replaced almost all of those with new webbing. I think I did an okay job for my first time. Yeah. So there were like five of them like that, maybe six. This is the only one left. Did that sucker. Just gonna put it back on here. In our preparation to go to the Bahamas, we had to do a bunch of engine maintenance. This included tightening the alternator and water pump belts, changing the engine oil, checking the engine coolant, changing the gear oil, and changing all the fuel and oil filters. We also had to do similar on the outboard engine, including changing the spark plugs, the zincs, the engine oil, and changing the lower unit oil. Went to the food store, provisioned for the trip. A ton of vegetables, some canned stuff, soups and stuff. We are bringing the hardtop to the boat right now. The welder hopefully is going to get his materials in today and cut and tack our support poles that we need and we'll be able to fit them, make any adjustments and then bring them back to him to weld. But we have this great looking weather window tomorrow, I mean the last few days and but especially tomorrow, Thursday and maybe Friday if we leave early enough to get over to the Bahamas and we really want to catch that window because we're supposed to meet Sierra's family over there towards the end of March 
but after this weather window, it looks like we're supposed to get like a big system coming through. Some big swell, 10 to 12 foot swell they're forecasting, and some heavy north wind, and we don't really see a reliable lull after this weather system. So we're a little nervous that it's gonna be nasty for two or three weeks, and we're not gonna be able to get over there to meet Sierra's family. We have been working really, really hard the past month to get everything that we need to get done, done. So we're pretty much ready. We're just kind of pulling together loose ends just in case we can we can get this bimini on quick and, and get out of here and we'll be ready. Ooh. the hard bimini held up with lines right in place pretty much where it's gonna go I'm super excited with how this came out how it looks on the boat so far I think there's a perfect amount of headroom under here it's gonna be a tiny bit taller than this so this is about 10 inches can be two inches taller than this so perfect goes with the whole height of the boat, kind of shorter than normal, but perfect for us. I don't think it takes anything away from the looks. I don't think it's gonna take too much away from the performance. Uh, so, so excited. Gives us a nice shade under here, sitting in the chair, as long as the sun's not from over here. Well, we're definitely gonna get some canvas, probably button it right along here enough so that we can roll it out and then we can bungee it off on the lifelines over here. Give us some shelter and shade on that side. Same thing on the other side, same thing off the back. And we'd really like to get a nice piece of Isinglass on the front here. Not for all the time, just for those times that are raining. It's really the rain. This we're not gonna have time for. Yeah, we're not getting this done before we go. This we might, I doubt it, but no. Whatever, at least we got the hard top up. I'm super. Okay. You know not to look, right? Yeah. I'll be in out quick. Welder got our materials in, he cut them all, he tacked them all, and I've been going back and forth all day long trying to fit these pieces on the boat, adjusting the angles, bringing them back to him, retacking them, bringing it back, seeing if it fits, bringing it back to him. Now he's got a bunch finished and welded up, but we're just doing the two back supports. Uh, hopefully this is the last fit up. The tacks will look good and he'll be able to weld them up permanently and then we can mount them. <laughs> this is crazy. We're just, we're, we're leaving like super early tomorrow morning, like pretty much tonight. And we have to, otherwise we're missing this window and we are just pushing. And I think we're being careful that we're not being unsafe or anything, but we just gotta, we gotta go. We gotta get this done. We gotta go. If we get too many signs that we shouldn't go, we definitely won't go. But everything is going smoothly, just kind of back and forth a lot today. We're almost done. 